Okay, so I've just finished watching State of the Game, and now we're going to cover, like, they didn't mention anything really about the raid. They're not changing the difficulty, they're not including matchmaking or anything like that at the moment. They said they can obviously change things whenever they want to, but for now, it's all going to stay the same. And this is going to be my in-depth guide on taking down Boomer. Me and my team were able to take him down in four minutes, I think it was like four minutes, five seconds or something, on the Xbox platform. And a couple of things I want to say before we get into it. Me and my group are not a pre-made group before the raid. I literally posted a video saying there was no matchmaking for the raid. I told everyone to leave their gamer tags and stuff in the comments. That's what a lot of my team did. So I got them all in the party. We've all started talking to each other. Then we've had like some of the group's friends come in and stuff like that. And all together, I want to give credit to everyone that's attempted this raid with me. Just because this first boss, Boomer, yes, we did it in four minutes. Yes, it's possible to do it that quick, obviously. But it's taken so much grinding, and it took a total accumulated 24 hours for us to be able to take him down. We were trying like six to seven hours a day. Even though we were doing 12 hours a day on the game, five or six of them hours every day were grinding for new gear. Then we was doing like five, six, maybe even sometimes seven hours in the raid to trying to take down Boomer. So the very first thing I want to point out, I've been talking to a couple of people in the comments about it. Your damage to elite stat, we believe so far, is what determines the damage you're going to get against the shield pillars, or the nodes as we call them. And I think with rough calculations, a 50% damage to elite stat is going to be 24,700 damage to one of the shield pillars. So if you can double that up, you're going to get 49.4, so 49,400 damage every single bullet that comes out of that turret. My damage to elites is 49%, so in the video where we cleared Boomer in 4 minutes, you'll see that I was hitting for about 24,500 roughly. So bear that in mind, because when you're doing this raid, people are going to need set rolls. Your entire team, whether they want to or not, are going to have to grind unless they already have an amazing build. I'll be putting out my LMG build video so that you can get a rough idea of what I've got. But one of the important stats is my damage bonus on my LMG is 66%. I have 40 from all weapons and then I have 26 for LMG specifically. You can get a lot more. I'm running a sharpshooter over demolitionist for the weapon handling and stuff. So I could use demolitionist to get an extra 15% damage, which will put mine from 66 to 81%. But my DPS is much higher when I use sharpshooter and I can handle the LMG better. But you can't go into the raid only having small damage. Like, you have to focus a lot on damage, but you don't have to min-max, you don't have to go for a glass cannon or anything like that. I have a decent amount of survivability. I'll try and get the LMG build out as soon as I can after this video so that you guys can see the build, so that you know what I'm talking about more in depth. You have to be so quick taking down Boomer. I'm not entirely sure how long it is, but you have a set timer, and if you haven't done anything to him, He's going to take out your first turret, and then I think it's exactly the same amount of time after, he's going to destroy your second turret. Two turrets down, objective failed, game over. I'm not entirely sure on the numbers, I think it might be like 10 minutes, 6 minutes, something like that, I'm not 100% sure, but there is definitely a timer, if you haven't got him down, you're taking too long to take him down, he will just go over and destroy your turrets, one by one, until you failed, like he will make you wipe if you're not quick enough. We have gone through probably over a hundred strategies to take this guy down efficiently and it's never going to work every single time. You can't just reset the raid, go back in, take him down again. Like you're not going to get rewards for that. You don't get any loot at all. But what I'm saying is if it was a thing to farm Boomer, if you could get loot over and over again, this isn't going to be 100% efficient. But the thing we found that works the best is... On the four laptops in the middle of the room, you are going to have to interact with them to stop the shield pillars coming back up so the enemies don't become immune. Like, we've had people scrambling to get to the laptops because the further you get Boomer down in his damage phases, the more laptops are going to pop up, so it makes it harder for the team. What we did was if there was one or two laptops that needed interacting with, we would have two players designated. We would have a primary and a backup laptop guy. So the primary goes in, takes the first laptop down. When two pop up, both go in. They communicate with each other to say which laptop they're taking. That way the shield pillars don't come back up. The turret guys can focus and I'll explain all that further in depth in a minute. Add control is next and it's probably the most important thing in this first boss room. Just because Boomer will chase you around, he'll destroy your turrets if you're not quick, but he's not the biggest threat. A lot of NPCs come out, they do not stop spawning. Every time you get him down into damage phase, more are going to spawn. If you take too long, more is going to keep piling up. So you need to make sure your team is focusing ads. 
then just communicate to say when Boomer's down, everyone turn around, put some bullets into Boomer. I would say roughly one to one and a half bars of armor per damage phase is good enough. Although if you can get that up to two bars, you're spot on. Always make sure that you are covering the guy that is on the turret. We run two turret guys, one primary, one backup. And if he's got no cover, if he gets dropped from the right or anything, that's probably going to be a wipe. Just because you have to mix things around, people have to get from different areas of the room over to the turret. And you need to be quick. Like, if you get the strategy down to a T, you've seen in the previous video, you can do Boomer in four minutes. It takes a long time to coordinate and everything with your team, but once you've nailed the mechanics and the strategy, you can have him down very quick. It's not a long boss fight at all. You have to make sure you know your roles. Even if people don't like hearing it, they're going to have to hear it. You need to be so spot on with this raid or you're never going to pass it. There's no point sitting in there going, oh, okay, I've been told this, I'm not going to listen, because you're going to fail. You and the rest of your team will fail if there's not enough communication. And yes, I know matchmaking is a big thing. I still agree that matchmaking should be in there so the players, like a lot more players, can access the content, which will make finding groups easier. And if you've got a group of seven, someone's match made, they found your group, invite them into the party, whatever you do on other platforms, and get them talking. If they don't talk, find a way to kick them or something. But if they communicate, a lot of randoms can be very, very good players. So I am hoping to see matchmaking come into the game soon. For the raid, it hasn't been mentioned yet. But I think not only for helping players that don't have access to the content, for letting people see exactly how hard it is. Because there's a lot of people watching videos getting the wrong end of the stick. They're saying, oh, this is such a simple raid, you just need to get good scrub all the rest of the shit is very difficult a lot of them players haven't even tried the raid they're just keyboard warriors sat in the comments saying oh it's easy you need to get good all the rest of it when they haven't even played the raid themselves just because you watch a video and think something simple from what someone shows you it's never actually that simple videos don't do anything justice you need to try it for yourself i think everyone's going to know this one but comms teamwork commitment and strategy is the most important thing without any of that you're never going to do a single part of this raid one of the things that let me down with this like obviously i had a bitchy phase when it first came out because it was very difficult i've only just started talking to my team when the raid dropped but there is not much diversity in this raid you're not going to have fun going in there with one person running true patriot one's got ongoing directive one's got hardwired it's not going to work the first boss room like, it might work at some point in the raid, but the first boss room is a DPS check. You have to have your DPS on par with what the developers have set, otherwise you won't pass that room. You need to be able to output a lot of damage. And the best weapons to use, you can use rifles, use anything you're comfortable with. If it works for you, then it works for you, but... My entire team are using LMGs and ARs. I'm an AR guy, but because of the extra bullets you get in a mag, the more DPS you can put per damage phase, I switched up to an LMG, grinded to optimize the build. I now run an LMG. Even when I'm just grinding and playing normal PvE, I've kind of switched from ARs to LMGs. But literally, LMGs, ARs, everyone's pretty much using the same skills. You've got the chem launcher, some people are using the healing drone. Then a lot of players are using the revive hive, even though that still has its bugs. And now the revive time on yourself is very slow. And now we've got the tips and stuff out of the way. What we're going to do is run through my entire strategy with my team from start to finish so that you can take this boss down. So as soon as you get into the room, you're going to see the four shield pillars up, two on each side by the turrets. What we do is, I'm primary turret guy, Salamander, we all call him Sal. He is the secondary, the backup turret guy. Then we have Rob, his gamer tag is Toby Tapped You. He is primary on the laptops. And then I forget who was second, I think it was Lucky. I'm pretty sure he was the backup on the laptops. So that's four players out of the eight that have a specific role. The other four, all you need to do is add control. That is your only job, and then when Boomer goes down into the damage phase, all eight of you stop what you're doing unless there's a laptop up, then the primary laptop guy goes to the laptop, but all of you are going to need to DPS the boss. So you get into the room. Our callouts for this are Burger. You'll know the Burger place when you see it. Then we have Donut. And we have door 40 round on that side. Then rotating from burger clockwise around the room, you go to turret, which is 41. Then you get doors 42, 43, 44. And then you're back to burger turret. So as soon as we got into the room, I would jump on the 41 turret. Sal would go get on the burger turret. Everyone would crowd around Sal. We would communicate, so we'd do like a everyone ready, let's go. Me and Sal would take down the shield pillars, starting with the back one first, then the front one. 
So the one furthest away from the turret, then the one closest to the turret. Then what we would do is Sal would stay on that turret, help deal with the ads and stuff like that. I would jump off my turret, run to the rest of the team. We would deal with the ads. Once the ads are down, Boomer comes into the room. And when Boomer is in the room, we get everyone to stand around in the middle and carry on focusing the ads because ads will spawn in with him. But you get a little time frame before them ads. Like Boomer will spawn and then like a few seconds later, the ads will start spawning in. You'll need to cover the turret guy both sides. But what we did is I jump on the turret, pop some hills down, and then whoever is I will shoot Boomer's chest as soon as he gets to the middle, trying your best to face him away from the turret. So his chest is down, he can't heal up, but when you shoot his chest, he's going to stop for a couple of seconds, and you'll hear him say, like, oh, my repair module's down. And then what you need to do is use the turret to take down his backpack. That's going to get him down into damage phase. Everyone DPSs, try and get a lot of headshot damage, get him through the first phase. Then whoever is on the turret is going to become the eye, so Boomer is going to chase them. It might do what it did for us in the four minute run, where Boomer selects someone else beforehand, but he will always eventually go back to the turret guy. So what we do is I say to Cell, get ready with next turret. Cell runs over to the next turret, everyone else in the team follows Cell round to the turret and protects him from NPCs. Whilst we had Con and Biggs still over at the burger turret, you don't necessarily have to be there, but they wanted to stay there. They dealt with the ads coming out of burger and doors 43 and 44. So Sal's on the next turret ready and waiting. I'm the eye because I've just come off the turret. You have to take Boomer straight to the next turret. Like this strategy, I'm basically going to call it turret rush. I will lead him round, and by the time I get round to the turret, or just a little bit before, his chest will pop back up. Because his chest is healing, take it down as soon as you see it glowing. Then what I do is lead him into the middle, where he's going to hit me. You have to stand there and take the hit. So whoever's going to be turret guy needs to have a decent amount of survivability, so you're not one shot. Sometimes Boomer, because of game mechanics, will just take you down in one hit. It doesn't matter how long this is taking, if you don't get a smooth start, make sure you wipe and start all over again. Because before Boomer comes out, it only takes a couple of minutes, it's not that long. And if it's not a smooth run, chances are you're not going to do it. You have to be so quick with this boss fight. So I've managed to get Boomer in the middle, in front of the 41 turret where Sal was waiting. I'll let him hit me, then I'll turn around and run away from the turret so Boomer chases me. His backpack is exposed to the guy on the turret. So turret guy is going to light him up. And you need to call when his shield starts taking damage, when the backpack starts taking damage so that everyone is ready to DPS. Boomer goes down, you deal a load of DPS, carry on without control and stuff at the same time. Then that's the second damage phase done. After that, the guy who was on the first turret, so me as the primary turret guy, is still going to have eye. So Cell needs to run from 41 turret back over to burger, everyone needs to cover Cell. And after the second damage phase, that is when the first laptop comes up. So primary laptop guy, make sure you're aware of the four screens on the outer side of the center. That will show you which laptop. And from top left, going to top right, it goes A, B, and then bottom right is C, bottom left is D. If you get confused, just have a look on the screen. When the laptops pop up, it will tell you the letter. It will be blue instead of red. Red is the ones you don't touch. Make sure the only laptop you interact with is the one that is blue. It will say the letter of the laptop. And clockwise going round, from Berg, you have A, Donut is B, Turret 41 is C, and Laptop D is going to be by Doors 43 and 44. But after that, it's basically rinse and repeat. All you have to do is run round to each turret, make sure the person with the eye is doing well at leading Boomer. Take a couple of hits if you need to. He's not going to like one-shot you every single time. You will sometimes be able to avoid the shot and keep yourself up. But if your team is not spot on with comms, strategy, if your builds aren't good enough, this DPS check is going to fail. You will never make it past this first boss. So make sure every rotation, go clockwise around the room if need be. This is obviously my strategy. You guys are going to come up with your own. But we go around clockwise. We make sure that ad control is down to a T so that the turret guide doesn't go down all the time. And as soon as the first guy gets off the turret, he's going to have I. He should have eye for the majority of the time unless he goes down. But make sure you get from one turret to the next straight away and make sure someone is always on that turret. Literally, turrets, boss, ad control. In terms of his chest, no one needs to focus on his chest unless the guy that has eye says, I can't do it. Whoever has eye, whoever Boomer is chasing, needs to deal with that chest. If possible, as soon as it's glowing, if not as soon as it goes green, because that is his healer. If you don't take that down, the boss is never going to die. He'll just heal back to full armor. That's game over. That's a wipe. You've got to start all over again. So that is my in-depth guide on how to take down Boomer. In the first Division 2 raid, Operation Dark Hours, 
Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.